Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill. This month, we're going to take a look at the funnel experiment and how it can help you avoid tampering with your process. Suppose you dry a product in a furnace. Your target for moisture content is 0.2%. You take a sample every two hours and measure it for moisture. If that moisture content's over 0.2%, you turn the temperature up so it dries it some more. If it's less than 0.2, you turn it down. The result of this is you're over controlling your process. And we're going to explain the importance of understanding variation when you adjust a process. And the funnel experiment's a great way of demonstrating what can happen when you tamper with the process. So in this video, we're gonna review variation. We're gonna describe the funnel experiment, talk about the four rules, show examples of the rules in real life, and learn how to ensure you do not over control your process. So let's go back and talk about variation. This month's sales are lower than last month's. It sometimes happens. And the question is, are those results really different? Quite often management says, well, what happened? Why are they less? It's a common question. And we often get the answer wrong because we assume we can attribute the difference to one thing. The truth is few problems are attributable to one person or one event. So understanding variation is the key to process improvement. There are two types of variation, common and special causes. They have nothing to do with specifications. Common cause of variation is due to natural variation in the process. For example, consider how long it takes you to get to work. There's a natural range of time, and maybe that's 20 to 25 minutes. As long as you're within that range, it's no big deal to you. It's part of the normal variation in your process. It's natural. That's what we call common cause of variation. It is present in any process and all processes. Special causes, on the other hand, are due to sporadic and natural events. They're not part of the natural variation. They are not meant to occur. Suppose you get a flat tire going to work. How long is it going to take you to get to work? Well, probably much longer than that normal variation of 20 to 25 minutes. So that's a special cause of variation. It's not supposed to be part of the process. So the question on sales from one month to the next, is it due to common causes or special causes of variation? And confusion leads to frustration, greater variation, and higher costs. Why is that? Because the action you take to improve a process depends on the type of variation you have. If you have special causes, it's a responsibility of frontline people to find. But if it's common cause of variation, it's responsibility of management because the process has to be fundamentally changed to reduce common causes. And taking the wrong action only increases variation. The only way to define, good way to define how to take action is through the use of control charts. Because one use of a control chart is to determine if special causes are present. If not, you just have common causes and the process is in statistical control. So how does a control chart work? Well, you plot your data over time, you calculate the average and add it to the control chart, and then you're gonna calculate the control limits and add those. The upper control limit, the UCL, is the largest value you'd expect if you just have common causes of variation present, that natural variation in your process. The lower control limit is the smallest value you would expect, the LCL, if you only have common causes of pre variation present. So no points beyond the control limits and no patterns mean your process is in statistical control. So let's talk about the funnel experiment and what we can learn about tampering with the process from it. Dr. Deming said, Any, if anyone adjusts a stable process for a result that is undesirable or for a result that is extra good, the output that follows will be worse than if he had left the process alone. This is what we call tampering with the process. It's something that's done by frontline people often and very, very often by management. This increases variation as well as losses in the process. So the funnel experiment gives us insights into what happens when you tamper with the process. Just to review, your process is in control. You don't know what the next data point's gonna be, but you know because it's in control, it's going to be someplace between that upper control limit and the lower control limit, as long as the process stays the same. This is an in-control process, and you do not take action on the ups and downs in the process, or as you will see, you're gonna increase variation. So example of over-controlling the process is the funnel experiment described by Dr. Deming. The objective is to drop a marble through a funnel and hit a target. A point on a level service is designated as a target. 
And then the funnel is held a certain distance above the surface and you drop a marble through the funnel. And then you're gonna mark where it ends up on the surface. Wherever it comes to rest, you put a mark. This is repeated at least 50 drops for each of four different rules. So let's take a look at the four rules. The first rule is one for a process that is in statistical control. You leave the funnel fixed over the target. You don't make adjustments. Rule two, for every drop, you're gonna move the funnel a distance minus C from its last position. Rule three, you're gonna hold, move the funnel a distance minus C from the target. And rule four, you're just gonna set the funnel over wherever the drop marble ended up. So rule number one is to leave the funnel fixed over the target. The target's the red circle. We have an Excel simulation that simulates dropping the marble multiple times. And you can see this variation is a rough circle and it's stable, you know, but surely we can do better than this. That circle's too big. So why don't we adjust the funnel after each drop? So we're gonna get closer to that target. And that brings us to rule two, the one we use most when tampering with the process. For every drop, the marble is gonna to come to rest to minus C from the target. So you're gonna move the funnel a distance minus C from its last position. And here's the Excel simulation showing it. And you can see it's also circular pattern like rule one, and it is stable. The difference is though that the circle for rule two is 41% larger than the circle for rule one. So rule two increases the variance of the process by a factor of two over rule one. And rule two is what we typically use in business by people trying to do their best. This is why it's so important to understand the information that's in variation. By responding to variation that is common causes if it were special cause, you are increasing the variation in your process. Now let's move on to rule three. And here you're gonna move the funnel a distance minus Z from the target after each drop. Before we move the funnel in rule two, now we're actually gonna move it versus the, the target. And here you can see the Excel simulation and you can see how far away it gets from the target very quick, quickly. The results look like a bow tie. This process is not stable. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, that bow tie. So those will continue to increase. And then let's move to rule four, which is simply to set the funnel over where the, the last drop came to rest. And here's the simulation. And what you can see is it's going off in one direction. And this is what happens with rule four. The marble eventually goes off in one direction. It's not a stable process and it doesn't return. So examples of the rules. We're gonna review some real life examples of rules two and four from the book, Out of the Crisis by Dr. W. Edward Stimming, published in 1968. So let's start with rule two. Examples of rule two, the ones that we use most of the time when over controlling a process. But one example of that is adjusting a process when a part's out of specifications. Another is operator adjustments without the aid of control charts. And then we have changing company policy based on the latest attitude survey or recalling instruments to a standard when it's not necessary to recalibrate it yet. Rule three, examples of rule three is we're gonna have one with lithic drugs. Enforcement improves, so drugs become scarcer. The price goes up, which stimulates the import of more drugs, and the cycle repeats. Or a gambler increasing his bet to cover his losses. And then finally, rule four, where you're just putting the funnel over wherever the marble ended up. Surely you won't do that. But worker training replacements in succession is just that, or using the last board as a pattern for the next board. Or that game we played as a kid, sitting in a circle with a number of people, you whisper a secret, it goes around, and it's nothing like it was at the end. So conclusion, we said that rule one, we surely can do better than this, and you can, but not by tampering with the process that's in control. The only way to truly improve a process that's in control is you have to change it fundamentally. New machines, new methods, new materials, but the process has to be fundamentally changed, and that's management's responsibility. Hope you enjoyed this video on the funnel experiment. To see more insights with Dr. Bill, click the YouTube subscribe button below, or you can visit our knowledge base on our website. Over 200 publications on SPC and statistical topics all free, or you can make your own charts. You can buy the SPC for Excel software or download the demo at our website, www.spcforexcel.com.
Thank you all for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed.